Drone Talks is an online platform to spread ideas and to educate in the drone ecosystem. At Drone Talks, we discuss technology, regulatory, business, and ecosystem topics openly with industry leaders to enable and foster innovation for a better future. Welcome, everyone. My name is Lorenzo Murzilli. I am the co founder of Drone Talks and the founder of Murzilli Consulting. And today I have the pleasure to speak with Mikhail Kokoric, which is the founder and CEO of Destinos. Hi, Mikhail. Welcome to Drone Talks. Thank you for inviting me. Mikhail, you have a very rich path, uh, and as usual with people of your caliber, I, I prefer to let you introduce yourself than attempting this uh, myself. So please, tell us our audience, who are you? What's your story? I was born in Siberia, in a small Mongolian village, not far from the place where Genghis Khan started his conquest. We had no sanitation in the house and almost no electricity. So when I began my education, I had to study by the light of kerosene lamp. But I was very good in science and math, and after several victories in Russian physics competition, I was invited to the best technical boarding school in Novosibirsk Academy Gorodok. This is the most prominent Russian scientific center. And after finishing this high school, I was like admitted to physics department of Novosibirsk State University, the best foundry of physicists in, uh, in Russia. But I started my first company when I was 19 years old, providing explosive and chemical services to Siberian companies. It grew very fast, and then I built, uh, after this when I sold it, I built a pretty large chain of the whole merchandise uh, stores all over the Russia, from one outlet to hundreds, from basically one person to 10,000 people to billion dollars in revenue. But finally, uh, I was always dreaming about the space uh, and aviation and, and physics. I was building when I was young, like uh, rocket engines. So I decided uh, when I sold my retail company, I decided uh, to uh, go to space and already 12 years I'm building the space companies from my first space company in Russia then three space company in the United States. Last of them become public in NASDAQ. And now we are building Destinus. This is the most exciting company uh, I think will be in aerospace industry because we really want to revolutionize the way how the cargo is delivered and then finally how people is traveling on Earth. You mentioned it's, it's exciting, it's revolutionizing. So give us a rundown. What's going on in De at Destinus these days? We basically developing a new type of vehicles. We call them hyperplanes. And this will be extremely fast and, and clean. So uh, with these hyperplanes, we can reduce the flight time by the order of magnitude. For example, we can travel from Europe and Australia as little as two hours. And because we use hydrogen as a fuel, uh, which eventually can be produced with the renewable sources of, it will be zero carbon emission immediate, and uh, we just like emit the water. So uh, this is what we are building, the hybrid of the rocket, and hybrid of the plane, that can be very efficient, very fast, very economical, especially when we build a big scale, and also very clean. When, you, when I hear you talking, it looks almost like a dreamy, you know, and I'm sure our, our audience is thinking, oh, he needs so much enabling technologies, he needs to revolutionize everything, and this is going to happen in the next 40 years, right? But I know that that's not the case. So tell us a little bit about the enabling technologies for, for something like that, and why do you think it's feasible in the relatively short to mid term? I think first look on the conops, basically, how it will look like these flights and what elements do we need to uh, create or develop. So our vehicles will be traveling through very high altitude, more than 50 kilometers. It's called actually mesosphere, it's above stratosphere. Uh, but it will be taken off from normal airport with a long runway, kind of four kilometers, and then fly hundred, couple hundred kilometers to the ocean so they can accelerate to supersonic speed using the first stage engine, uh, aeroturbo rocket engine, which is a, I would say, known technology, uh, and then accelerate from supersonic speed to hypersonic speed with a rocket engine. Uh, so we want to ride at a velocity of close to 13, 15 Mach, which is a, sounds very fast, but it's actually a rocket. And uh, the logic for this is simple. If you need to move something from one place to Earth to another place on Earth, you need to spend energy for 
in several directions. So one, you need to overcome the gravity. This gravity losses, yeah? It depends how long you need to keep this plane in the in the, in the air. Yeah. So longer, the more gravity losses. Second, it's a uh, the uh, the air, uh, the basically uh, aerodynamics. You know, the friction of the air. And third, it's maximum velocity kinetic energy. Yes, we need to accelerate our vehicle to very high velocity using the rocket engine. So we need to spend more energy for acceleration. But because we are flying 10 times faster, and because we are flying at extremely high altitude where it's more than 100 times less air than on a sea level and 10 times of less air than on a 10 kilometers, our gravity losses and aerodynamic loss is extremely low. So overall, it starts to be very appealing. So actually, we can with the larger vehicles, we can move the stuff from, from here to another continent cheap on the normal planes. It sounds strange, but yes, I mean, you just spend less energy for this. And uh, we need to develop several uh, key technologies which is uh, more or less existing in other industries. For example, rocket engine. Rocket engine is something that known for many, many years. So uh, dozens of companies build the rocket engines, even like uh, many countries build the rocket engines. So it's not that something it's impossible to develop. It's still high tech, and we need to develop a rocket engine that will be almost as as usable as a jet engine. Uh, and uh, and this is a different design point because when people build the rockets, they need to accelerate to very high velocity, eight kilometers per second. They need to uh, uh, they need to drive this rocket engine to the highest possible performance, specific impulse, highest temperature highest pressure inside, and uh, we can give up a little bit on performance, but increase your usability because it's need to be like a plane. Second very important piece, it's a cooling system because we want to build a vehicle reusable and build from conventional materials like a steel, like Starship, but because we will be flying this very high velocity for more than half an hour, we need to cool the structure. Uh, otherwise, we will melt because the thermal uh, flow uh, will be between megawatts and dozens of megawatts for linear edges per square meter. So it's, it's a, a lot of like thermal flow. Anything will melt. So uh, we plan to use active cooling with the hydrogen, which actually used in many other applications for turbine blades, for generators, and we need to apply this for leading edges and for the wings, uh, for the surfaces, for the body uh, of the of, of the vehicle. And the hydrogen fuel technologies. I mean, basically the tanks. Uh, we have advantages because we are flying very f uh, fast and we spend majority of the hydrogen in the first basically 10 minutes. So we can store hydrogen as a liquid. We don't need to pressurize it. So then we are more, from this perspective, we are more rocket than the plane. That's super, super interesting. Thank you very much. And I mean, I, 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 I captured a, cap a word that uh, for me is crucial. You mentioned about reusability, you know. We know that that's, uh, if you look at SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk's uh, achievements, the reusability was like one of the, the major tenants of everything. And, and this brings me more on the, on the business models and the markets. I mean, somehow you, you, you are a successful entrepreneur in space. Now you are entering aviation, but somewhere in between, like between space and aerospace, between the, that level where it's even not clear whether you are building a rocket or an aircraft, and uh, is this is this a new market? Tell us a little bit about the business model that you foresee, and, and in general, what's your experience around these markets? We are addressing the huge existing market of uh, Aero Express delivery air freight market, and finally the passenger aviation market. It's a more than trillion dollars now, not in ten years, not in a hundred years, but now because almost everything what you have it's actually delivered by by planes when your mobile phone is delivered by planes you know like uh you know uh fruits from chile in the winter is delivered by planes uh the computers uh even textile even like you know zara you know delivered by planes because because it's fast you cannot afford to deliver for weeks and weeks in the containers uh, so the demand is huge and eventually with a larger vehicles that can carry 100 tons and can be competitive with uh, uh, conventional planes, we can basically substitute normal cargo delivery at all. But even uh, with the first entry vehicles, which will be much smaller than the final one, we have very healthy early adopters market. 
uh, which can afford like a, some premium, paying some premium, and uh, it can be many different. Like it can be life-saving drugs or organ for transportation it can be brought, you know, quickly as possible. Or if you have something broken in your manufacturing facility, you can have it in a few hours. And documents can be on a customer deck in you know, basically the same day. So amazing tuna from Mediterranean will be in the kitchen of Japanese, like a you know restaurant as fresh as it just had been caught, you know. And eventually it can be the same price, but initially this is a pretty large uh, segment of the market that can afford pay quite good premium several times uh, for the delivery that can happen in just a few hours. Because now, if you deliver something with FedEx from one continent to another, two days, three days, uh, like uh, human organs, nobody delivering this with FedEx now, or isotopes for uh, uh, radiotherapy, for cancer radiotherapy, it's impossible to deliver. I, I have to ask you this question, because every time, you know, en entrepreneurs uh, come with the uh... Aviation will allow me to deliver, you know, same day across continents. I think the world kind of, when you, when I hear this, I can feel the world splitting in two, right? There is the, the one half that says, that's awesome. And the other half that says, oh, this is going to be horribly polluting. You know, this is exactly what we don't want, you know? And, and so I wanted to ask you about sustainability of, of high speed flights. Like you, 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 you are coming in with this proposition of, you know, transporting tons very fast. And why is this sustainable? How do you make this sustainable? This is a very good question because high-speed transport will face another level of the sustainability challenges. And any technology that finally claims to conquer the world must not spoil it uh, with the result of its activities. Yeah, And, and uh, we believe that this is a, where our hyperplanes very favorable with the traditional aviation, traditional uh, supersonic like uh, aviation. First, our all our engines uh, do not use hydrocarbons, but hydrogen. So we have no carbon dioxide emission. It's number one. Second, for the initial phase of the stage, we use ATR, aero turbo rocket engine. We use it for takeoff, for landing, for initial flight. And this engine burn hydrogen and oxygen from the tanks. They have bypass with the air, but they burn hydrogen oxygen from the tank, so there are no nitrogen oxides uh, emission, which is extremely toxic and a problem for basically any uh, jet air engines, but will be a big problem for supersonic planes, which will be very hot, I mean, because it will be emitting so much nitrogen oxides, so it will be like big, big problem. On a cruise flight, we do not emit water, uh, which is a greenhouse gas uh, on the stratosphere. But we emit only hot hydrogen uh, heated by our active cooling system. So it will be, from this standpoint, uh, not creating also the, the water emission, water vapor emissions. And also because of the high altitude, the 60 kilometers, which is a three times higher than kind of supersonic planes, which is flying at 20 kilometers, the noise level from sonic boom will be 10 times less. It's another, it's still like also ecology because I mean, the, 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 the sonic boom will be disturbing not only for people, it will be disturbing for you know animals, for nature. I mean, so we need to think about this also. Excellent. Thanks. So thank you. I think the other half of the world now, okay, you know, it, it feels a, li a little bit better about this. So thank you very much. Uh, I have last, well, one last question. I mean, you, you founded the uh, Destinos here in Switzerland, like I mean, your operating base is, is in Payern. And I, I wanted to ask you, you know, why Switzerland? It was a very thoughtful uh, decision. Uh, to go to Switzerland and in, in particularly, but also in Europe, because even our headquarter and um, half of the people in Switzerland, we also have large team, for example, in Germany, in Munich, where we're developing our engines. We have a big team in Spain uh, where we're developing our mission design, but also we'll be building the larger structures where people have experience with building structures and also testing the vehicle. And also we uh, opened our subsidiary in Toulouse where a lot of experience from aviation industry. So it's a, it's a wider European uh, project, but uh, first on a Switzerland. Uh, uh, Switzerland definitely it's a, a good attraction point for the best engineers because it's a uh, high quality of life. It's an international environment. So people with multiple languages can come. We are in the Canton de Vaux on an edge between like Fr French speaking and German speaking Canton. So it's easy to come people who with a family who speak German, who speak French. Uh, a lot of people like uh, from you know Italian, Spanish, Portuguese background actually 
come to, to us. And uh, in general, Europe now it's a very good place to start this type of the companies because for last 10, 20 years, uh, a lot of talented European engineers was looking to SpaceX, Blue Origin, as a startup saying, hey, when when somebody will make the something like this here in, in Europe so we can be part of something great and interesting. And uh, uh, we like to get a very good response from talented engineers. For some positions, we had hundreds of CVs, like for hypersonic engineers, we had 400 applicants, which actually tell that it's an extremely right time to get high talents. And I can compare because with my previous company, but now in uh, 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 like a public in NASDAQ, uh, I was also hiring from the scratch, uh, but the experience of the people and the uh, level of the maturity here, what I have uh, from the beginning, is basically another level that I had in US. In US, it was so competitive, it was so hard to hire good people. Here, this is a just unbelievably good. It's unbelievably good. Talent is your number one reason, talent attractiveness. And uh, yeah, I, I recently saw the Switzerland came first on that. So I think uh, it's not only your experience, I think it's the experience of many others. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Mikhail, for, for this chat. I think it was extremely entertaining and engaging. I learned a lot. I hope our, our viewers will learn a lot too. And thank you. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Lorenzo. And thank you for everybody who is uh, hearing our small story. And uh, yeah, I suggest just to follow what we are doing. Uh, go to our LinkedIn page, go to our website. We will soon will be launching our new website version. And uh, if you would like to be part of the future transportation of making the world smaller, we are always welcome. Thank you. Brought to you by Drone Talks Online, a platform designed to spread ideas and educate in the drone ecosystem. Search for dronetalks.online to hear from more of our industry leaders and to find out how you can get involved.